All right, so at this point, here is my collection of keyframes. Here is my sketch. And I am still stuck between number seven and eight in my nine panel storyboard sketch. So even though I have more than nine frames, I have 10 now, I'm still a few short to get back to just before this moment. You know, I need to add a lot more sunlight, a lot more warmth, and I need to melt that ice a little bit faster now. So these are actually technically called in-betweens because they're not the, the big kind of hero moment keyframes. So the next one, let's work from the top down this time. Going to make that sun brighter. Going to slough off the ice even more. It's just starting to recede off. Going to flip the crystals and basically turn them way, way down. Going to move the atmosphere and brighten it up a little bit by taking the opacity down on it. That sun's really making a difference now. Helps us really see our creature better too. So eventually, we'll get rid of all that atmosphere and we'll see the, the brightness of the background. The ice, I'm gonna keep taking it down a little. And I'm not trying to be too exact with my opacities, just as long as they always move in the same direction. And then the ice around my creature, take that down almost completely. So now we can start to see some movement in the character. And then in the character, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm gonna use Puppet Warp under Edit. Still can't move his feet, but now we can get some movement in the back and in the tail and in the head. So we move the head down now and back. Like it's sucking up the, um, the sun a little. Maybe wiggle the tail. So from this to this. Breaking free. Then I'm also going to start doing something. Instead of just saturating it, I'll show you how you can use layer styles on different elements. So if I wanted to make it look like he's kind of warming up from the inside, I could do a color overlay. Let's do something a little bit oranger than red. And then I can just take the opacity way down. And so you can see without it, that makes a pretty big difference. In fact, it's so strong, I might need to dim it a little bit more. Let's try 7%. So the whole point of animating step-by-step step like this is that your changes don't disorient your viewer. You know, don't surprise your viewer. It all flows naturally. And the clouds are going to recede even more. Brightening the day. And then the background's going to get brighter. And the advantage of making all these duplicates of the backgrounds is I can play with the opacity of them. So I can transition exactly to where they are. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's save that. And it's important to save it as a PSD so everything's at that same setting when I come back to it, even if I had to take a break. And then I want to export it as a JPEG. And then that will be my next 
keyframe. Now, am I yet to number eight, where it's just around his feet? Not quite yet. So this is going to be 7C. Just like I had 4, 4B, 4C, I'm going to have 7, 7B, and 7C. That's just how I organize it. So I'm going to find it in my downloads. Bring it in. And call it 7C. Now, why am I always renaming them? So that when I bring it in from the downloads, it doesn't try to overwrite something I already have. So I always give it a new name. And so we're starting to see that pretty strong transition. And it should keep speeding up. So now my next frame, I'll work from the bottom. Brighten up the background even more. Dim the clouds even more. All this stuff I added really showcases the character then. Now I can even start to think about playing with the character's shadow. It suggests that it's moving again. This hasn't moved in a while with the frozen, so I'm gonna just move it a little bit. And my character I'm gonna duplicate and then puppet warp. Still not moving the feet, but I'll move the head in the opposite direction now. And move the tail up again. This is so subtle, but in movement, you will be able to tell. And I'm going to play with that color overlay, and I'm just going to increase it just a tiny bit more. So we're really getting the sense that it's separating from the ice. Speaking of the ice, I want to start taking it down a lot more. I don't even need this on anymore. Maybe like that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase out a little bit of it. Since there's so much overlap. I'm not thrilled with how muddy that looks. So I could try playing with a blending mode. but I do need the ice to still be there. So I think I just have to kind of live with its slight muddiness. I could try sharpening it. But it's mostly muddy just because of its low opacity. But that does help a little bit. Okay. So I can look at my last keyframe. And I can compare it. Obviously, a lot more ice there. And this is number eight. Looking good. And now I still Let's see. And still make the sky a little bit brighter. And slough off the ice. That helps to clarify it. And then turn the crystals off entirely. Or if I'm being really, really careful about that much. 
Okay. So now we're finally to keyframe eight and we're getting really close to getting back to the beginning of my animation cycle. It's all running pretty smoothly so far. And the more mistakes you make, the more you will learn from them. So don't get frustrated when you see things that need to be fixed. It gives you the opportunity to really have to think them through. Okay, so I'm finally to number eight. And now, if I can do it all in one keyframe, I can get to right before this moment. But I probably will need two. So I'll probably need an 8B. So let's start. I can make the, the sun actually start to recede a little bit because that sun isn't as bright in the, the first panel. I can turn off that slough. I can turn off the crystals. The ice, I can turn that one off and maybe dampen this one a little bit more, about halfway. This will dampen about halfway. My character, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to start toning down the color effect. Again, that was just to kind of highlight that last bit of thawing out. And let's see, this might be an opportunity to go back to a previous character version. Yeah. So if I just go to this previous one, then that will get me closer to the beginning anyway. And it shows that its feet are free. And then the clouds can take down just a little bit more. Nice clear day. And then the shadow, I can move. So everything you, you leave showing, you want to make adjustments to. Understand why you're making the adjustments. And then this. Just going to start to fade this out a little bit so we get back to that warmth of the first. And actually, that might be enough to get us back to the first panel. Let's find out. So, save it. And who knows, this might be the last keyframe I need. And then export as a JPEG, and then I'll run an animation test. See if I can do this all in the last minute of this video. Has to do with how quickly it saves. So let's try this as just number nine. Okay, now I go to giftmaker.me. I upload all of those keyframes. I say open. I'll squeeze this so you can see it. It doesn't need to be nine keyframes. It can be as many as you have, right? This is for the animation, not the refined storyboard. I'm setting it at 100 size at 350 milliseconds. And I can see it there. 